We're continuing our end time series. And this morning we're going to talk about the unholy trinity. We're going to start talking about the first member of the unholy trinity, Satan, the dragon. We're looking at the seven year great tribulation that's going to occur after Christ returns to rapture His church. This unholy trinity consists of Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. This week our discussion is going to focus on Satan, the father of this holy trinity, unholy trinity. Now the purpose of this unholy trinity is to replicate the holy trinity of the Father God, the Son Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Satan will attempt to copy the Holy Trinity. He will do this in order to convince people that he is the true God. However, as we will see in the coming weeks, he will fail and he will be defeated. Let me first state, though, that he is already defeated. He was defeated over 2,000 years ago when our Savior, the Son of God, the second member of the Holy Trinity, Jesus Christ, hung on the cross, died, was buried, and on the third day resurrected. That was the final blow to Satan and his unholy trinity. Now Satan is our accuser in heaven. He is in heaven, right now as I speak, attacking us, accusing us of all kinds of sins. Whether you're guilty, or whether you haven't even thought of it. He has angels or demons that are going throughout the world convincing people to reject Christ as their Savior. Satan is working against those who have accepted Christ as their Savior. He is sending his demons to attack those who belong to God through Jesus Christ. Satan is the father of the unholy trinity and the creator and father of all evil. It is important to remember, though, that the only power that Satan has is the power that God allows him to have and that God is always in control. Satan is the dragon that we're going to read about in Revelation chapter 12. So first, let's look at the first six verses of chapter 12. We're going to talk about the woman, the dragon, and her child. Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 through 6 says, A great wondrous sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his head. His tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front, in front of the woman who was about to give birth, so that he might devour her child the moment it was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will, rule, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into a place, into the desert, to a place that God had prepared for her where she might be taken care of 1,260 days. Now the woman that is referred to in this passage is Israel. The 12 stars in her crown represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, part of this prophecy has already passed. Part of this prophecy is in the future. Being clothed in the sun refers to the, jerk, the Jews that believe that Christ is the Messiah. Also referred to as Messianic Jews. They believe that Christ is who He said He was. Did what He said He did. Since the moon reflects the light of the sun, the moon being on her feet represent those who have accepted Christ as their Savior. Reflecting the light of the Son of God. The light of Christ reflecting through the church. Being pregnant points to Israel being the nation in which Christ came into this world. The nation of Israel was God's chosen people. Christ, the Son of God, was born 
through Israel. As the woman Israel prepares to give birth a dragon, Satan also appears in heaven. This dragon has seven heads and crowns, which represents the nations that are under Satan's control. Seven nations that are, were under his control at the time that Israel was about to give birth to the Christ. Satan only has control over this world and nothing else. It is important that we remember that. Satan has no power or authority in heaven and has limited power and authority on earth. But the ten horns represent the ten kings or regions that the Antichrist will establish and will gather together at the battle of Armageddon that we spoke about last week. The dragon sweeping a third of the stars out of the sky and flinging them to earth tells us that a third of the angels in heaven followed Satan in his rebellion against God. Remember, Satan himself was an angel. <laughs> Satan himself was second in command in heaven only to God. But he rebelled. He wanted to be God. He wanted to be like God. So he rebelled and he took a third of the angels with him in his rebellion. By casting them to earth, he is sending them out to do his evil works. These angels, known to us as demons, work against Christ and work against the church. The dragon awaits to devour the child because of the defeat that he will suffer if this child fulfills the prophecies that are written about him. If he allows this child to live, he is doomed. The male child which the woman Israel gives birth to is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah. <coughs> Christ will one day rule this entire world Every person living in every country, he will be king, sitting on his throne on this earth for a thousand years. He will rule with great authority. He will protect his people and defend his church against anyone who attempts to attack and destroy it. Now, this talked about that he will. In the coming days, in the days of the seven year tribulation. But I want you to also understand that Christ is protecting and defending his church right now. Christ has protected and defended his church for the past 2,000 years. And Christ will protect and defend his church until the day that he comes to call us home to heaven. Understand that. This just isn't in the future. This is the past, the present, and the future. Because we have the account of Christ's life on earth in the Gospels, John immediately talks about Christ's ascension into heaven after his resurrection. Christ, who is the woman's child, now sits on his throne in heaven at the right hand of the Father. My friends, we do not serve a God that is dead. We do not serve a Christ that is dead. Our Messiah is alive. Amen. Man, when they put him in the ground 2,000 years ago, Satan thought he had won. Satan thought this was it. I have victory. But just three short days, his whole world fell to pieces when Christ arose out of that grave. During the last three and a half years of the tribulation, the last 1,260 days, the woman will flee from the Antichrist and his one world government. She will be protected by God in a place that he has prepared. This place will offer the people of Israel shelter, food, water, and protection. Now let's go back to what we've talked about in the past several weeks about the, the wrath of God and the trumpet judgments and the seal judgments and the bowl judgments. At this point, one half of the way through the tribulation period, 
a third of the seawater has been turned into blood, and a third of the fresh water has been turned into poison. <clears throat> Many of the animals and plant life of the earth have been killed. But in this place that God has prepared for His people to flee from the Antichrist, there's not going to be this problem. Then as we look later into the tribulation, we talked about all of the water, both the salt water and the fresh water being turned into blood. All of the water was gone. But see, the people of Israel are going to be protected. They're not going to have that problem. Again, we see that God is in control. We don't understand everything that's happening. We don't understand everything that this is talking about. But what we do understand is that God is in control. Next, I want to look at the dragon being cast out of heaven. In Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 12, which reads, There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down. This ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now has come the salvation and the power of the kingdom of our God and the authority of His Christ. For the accuser of our brothers, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. They have overcome Him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea. Because the devil has gone down to you, he is filled with fear because he knows that his time is short. <clears throat> Satan, who right now is in heaven accusing God's people of sins, will be forced into a war in heaven by the archangel Michael and his warrior angels. And they're going to fight against Satan and his angels. Satan is going to lose this war in heaven and finally be completely cast out from the presence of God. He will be cast to earth along with his angels or demons. Satan, even today, and since the fall of man, has been leading people away from God. He will be cast to earth. He will no longer have access to God for accusing God's people. He will now have free reign over the earth and, his, and its people. This war occurs around the midpoint of the tribulation. Satan being cast out of heaven will completely take over the rulings of the Antichrist. He will reign terror on the earth. There will be rejoicing in heaven because Satan has been cast out. The heavens will rejoice because salvation has been given from God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Even today, for 2,000 plus years, heaven is rejoicing because of the salvation that we have through Jesus Christ. Christ's power and His kingdom are soon to be sent to the earth. Those who are saved have overcome Satan through the blood of Christ. The testimonies of the saved have brought other people under the salvation, sanctifying blood of Christ. Even though many are faced with death, because of their faith in Christ, they remain strong. We talked about this some this morning in Sunday school. In America, we have no idea of what the first century Christians faced for their faith. We have no idea of what Christians in third world nations are facing today for their faith. People are being killed around our world today for their faith in Jesus Christ. People are having to be put in a position where they are even having to make a choice 
whether they're going to continue to confess Christ as their Savior and die, or whether they're going to deny Christ and live. But because of the salvation and the hope that we have through Jesus Christ, no matter what we are faced with, even death, we can remain strong in our faith in Christ. Satan has been defeated. As I said, he was defeated over 2,000 years ago. He just hasn't conceded the fight yet. Satan is and will accuse us of many things while he is in heaven. However, we are covered by the blood of Christ. And we have overcome any accusation that he can throw at us. Anything that we have done, anything that we will do is covered in the blood of Christ. Amen. Satan's accusations carry no weight because he throws out the accusations. But Christ stands up and says, pay in full. Amen. They are covered in my blood. Your accusations mean nothing. This is the reason that there is and will be rejoicing in heaven when the accuser is cast out. The earth and the sea, however, are given a stern warning. This warning is sent because Satan will be furious about this defeat and this war in heaven and about being cast out. Satan's time is short, and he knows it. We know through our study of the Scriptures that he only has three and a half years left before Christ returns. This will be Satan's final revolt before the millennial reign of Christ. Satan will seek to kill and destroy any remaining believers on earth. Any remaining Jews, any remaining Christians, he will seek out to destroy. Even today he is at work. His demons are working hard attacking Christians and drawing people away from God. My friends, no matter how much you would like to believe, this is not a fictional character. Satan is very real. Satan is the very real enemy of God. And he will do whatever he has the power to do in order to destroy anything that belongs to God. During these final three and a half years of the tribulation period, Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet will demand the world's worship. Again, Satan is defeated already. They can demand worship, but many will not give it to them. Even though Satan is already defeated, he wants to take everybody with him that he can. The only way to overcome his attacks is to be covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Next, I want to talk about the dragon and the woman after the dragon is cast out of heaven. In Revelation chapter 12, verses 13 through 17, we read, When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the desert where she would be taken care of for a time, times, and a half a time out of the serpent's reach. Then from the mouth of the serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away with the torment. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the devil had spewed out of his that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to make war against the rest of her offspring, those who obey God's commandments and hold to the testimony of Jesus. After Satan is cast to the earth, He's going to go after Israel. If you remember what we talked about a few weeks ago, when the Antichrist rises to power, he's going to make a seven-year peace treaty with the people of Israel. But at this point, Satan is so furious that he causes the Antichrist to break that peace treaty. The Antichrist, who will be indwelt by Satan, will enter the temple that has been rebuilt in Jerusalem. And he will defile it by claiming to be God. And he will attack the people of Israel, causing them to flee. By saying that they will be given wings, John is telling us that they will be divinely transferred to the place that God has prepared for them. 
Satan will pursue them. This is the same place that we referred to back in verse 6. And they will be protected for the final three and a half years of the tribulation. As we've done the math before, time is one year, times is two years, and then a half a time is a half a year, telling us that it is the final three and a half years. Satan will not be able to reach these people, but he will continue to try to attack them. He will attempt to destroy them by a flood. And as we know, a lot of what is written in Revelation, a lot in this chapter and a lot of the next chapter, is symbolic. This flood may be an attempt to draw the people of Israel out of their place of safety so that he could attack and kill them. It may be an attempt to draw them into sin, draw them away from God. It may actually be an actual attempt to flood this place in the desert that Israel has fled to, causing them to leave their place of safety, which will allow Satan to destroy them. But whatever the flood waters are, whether they're real or symbolic, they will fail because the earth itself will swallow it up. Again, we see the supernatural power of God. Again, we see that God is in control. He protects His people. When Satan tried, whatever Satan tries will be unsuccessful because of God's hands of protection on the people of Israel during the final three and a half years of the tribulation period. And if you don't believe that God is protecting Israel today, watch the news. God still protects Israel. God will always protect His people. Because of His unsuccessful attempt to destroy this nation, this small nation that He's been trying to destroy for generations, that He will make complete and utter every attempt that he could possibly think of in his last three and a half years. He will fail and he will be furious and he will turn his attention away from Israel and towards the remaining living Christians. At the midpoint of the tribulation, many people have been saved. They've been saved through the two witnesses that we've talked about and the 144 Jewish evangelists, 144,000 Jewish evangelists. But because he fails to destroy Israel, Satan is going to go after these Christians. These are the other offspring of the woman. Because you see, we are born of Israel through the blood of Christ. We are children of God like the, children, like the people of Israel through the blood of Christ. We are the offspring of the Father. Satan will do everything in his power to kill every living Christian and he will be successful in killing many during this time. But again, as we're going to see here in a couple of weeks, remember, God is in control and Satan has been defeated. Amen. Now I want to revisit the two witnesses that we talked about a few weeks ago. And I'll finish their story. Because their story ends at the midpoint of the tribulation. And in Revelation chapter 11, verses 7 through 12, we read, Now when they finish their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and will overpower them and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. For three and a half days, men from every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse them burial. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts. Because, because these two prophets had tormented those who lived on the earth. But after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them. And they stood on their feet and terror struck those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from he heaven saying, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in the cloud while their enemies looked on. See, at this midpoint of the tribulation, when Satan is cast from heaven, he's going to use the Antichrist to kill these two witnesses. And the Antichrist is going to be able to attack and to kill these two witnesses because their 1,260 days of ministry is over. God is going to remove His hand of protection from them 
allowing them to be killed. Remember, God is in control. The bodies will be left where they fall in the streets of Jerusalem for three and a half days. Sin will be will overtake Jerusalem, making it like Sodom and Egypt. They will not allow these two witnesses to be get, to be buried, which is the greatest dishonor that can be given. Because of the ministry and the plagues that they call down on people, people will celebrate the death of these two witnesses. See, these prophets tormented the people of the earth with plagues, and by affecting their conscience with a message that they did not want to hear. As part of their celebration, they will give each other gifts, much like we do at Christmas time. There will be three and a half days of worldwide celebration because they will believe that they have won a great victory. However, after these three and a half days, we see again the supernatural power of God when He will resurrect these two witnesses. Those who see this happen will be terrified. After their, re their resurrection, a voice will call them from heaven. They will ascend to heaven in a cloud as terrified people watch. This is yet another great victory of Christ over Satan. Just over 2,000 years ago, the woman Israel gave birth to the Messiah, Jesus Christ. After his ministry was complete on earth, God snatched him up from death and he ascended into heaven where he sits right now on his throne at the right hand of the Father. As a seven year tribulation reaches its midpoint, Satan, the dragon, will lose a war in heaven and will be cast down to the earth. His rage will be so great that he will try to attack the people of Israel. Israel, however, will be taken to a place prepared by God for, for safety. This will happen through the supernatural power of God. Because of Israel's protection of God, Satan will force his attack on the remaining Christians on earth, killing many. This will begin with the killing of the two witnesses in Jerusalem. However, after just three and a half days, these witnesses are resurrected and ascend into heaven. Satan will empower the Antichrist during your tribulation. At the midpoint of the tribulation, Satan will have complete control over the Antichrist and the earth. Now next week, we're going to look at the Antichrist and his false prophet the last two members of this unholy trinity. But this morning I want to focus on the idea that I presented today. That God is in control and Satan has been defeated. So I ask you this morning a simple question. Is God in control of your life? Are you covered by the blood of Christ? Is the Messiah your Savior? That is the only way to get to heaven. That is the only way to get to God. Is through the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning I want to give you the opportunity, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, to give God control of your life by accepting the gift, the free gift of the blood and sacrifice of His Son, Jesus Christ. So this morning as we sing, if you have a decision that you would like to make, come forward.